and uh, you, you, you went on the field with a GPS and you took the, the actual coordinates of the house, the houses of the cases, all the cases. So you were standing at the doorstep and you took the GPS coordinates using the W, for instance, WGS 84 datum, and you selected 16, I think there are 16 cases in this example. And using the same GPS on the same day, you took a random sample of the Stuttgart population, and you did exactly the same. You went, you went to the registry of the municipality, you took sample of 30 inhabitants and you went to their doorstep and you took also a GPS point of their homes. Uh, you would have therefore a number of points, point data, not, more, not, not any more polygons, but points stored in a GPS. Uh, it usually comes in a very simple text file with a, a x, y coordinates corresponding x corresponding uh, to the longitude and y corresponding to the latitude, expressed therefore in lat long, um, that you can that you can import easily within QGIS. If you go to plugins, so these are these are the plugins that are automatically installed when you download the software. There are other plugins, external plugins that you need to go manually and download them. These are automatically installed. There is one for the GPS, as you can see. And you can, using this tool, import load GPS, uh, download from GPS, and selecting the right brand of GPS and the type of data that you're importing, waypoints would be the right thing to do in this case. You can directly import that layer in your in your view, okay. So we don't we didn't go. Uh, I didn't actually go uh, out in Stuttgart and to the GPS points, but I kind of mimic the GPS the GPS files, which I stored. I will go this afternoon, but I didn't have time this morning. So I stored the same the, the points in a C, uh, CSV uh, file, which is very similar. And you can, you can also import in the G, in the in, in QGIS such uh, such data, such file okay, well, yeah. by using by using the option add delimited text layer. Okay. What, what, what do you need for the add delimited text layer? And the GPS point. It's just a plugin that allows you to import. Uh, CSV files, uh, CSV files, CSV which contains files. coordinates, point coordinates. Mm -hmm. So we'll open the file just to have a look at how it looks. <laughs> you can open it in Excel. Yes. And we can open it in Excel, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. So uh, if you go to your working directory, so same working directory, I have a file called uh, GPS points Stuttgart. So it's a, it's a simple CSV file. So it contains, in this case, uh, four, four columns, four variables. One which is called X, and it contains in, in, uh, in degrees, in decimal degrees, the, uh, the longitude of the point. On the y, y column, you have the latitude. And then you have uh, ID number. <coughs> which is unique for every point. And here I've, I've, I've added another column which defines a case and a control. It's one for a case and zero for a control. Okay? So now what we're going to do using that, pl that simple plugin in QGIS, we're just going to import that uh, CSV uh, files, file into, uh, into the view, making sure that QGIS plots each point correspond, uh, uh, Corresponding to those those coordinates, and so as you can see that there, there's a total of 46 points. So if we manage to successfully import this for this file, this this, this information uh, into the view, we'll be able to see 
of 46 points. So what I, I do, I go, I go to layer, and there's an option called add delimited text layer. In Mac, where should I go? It's the same in Mac, it's layer, add delimited text layer. The logic is the same here, I'm going to have to browse and get that uh, CSV file, browse. <coughs> It's in my working directory data, this module, GPS point Stuttgart. You should also have it on your working directory. I select it, I open it, and I, I now have to be careful to select here the right, the right option. What makes what makes it easy here is you can visualize you can visualize the file that you're going to import, and you can see here that it rightly it rightly uh, presents the table. So it was indeed it was the comma that you had to uh, to select. It's a comma comma Did you use the because in Germany we have this funny feature that we use a comma instead of the point. Normally we need the point. Yeah, it's a point. It's a point. Yeah, it's a point for the. Yeah, because we have in, in our Excel we have a comma at this. Always, always cause trouble. And here, here, the important thing here is to assign to the x field here the x coordinates, so the, the longitude, which was called x in my file, so I leave it to x. And the y field is expecting here the, 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 the latitude coordinate, and it was named y in my file, so I leave it to y. And I can press OK. He's asking me. He's asking me the spatial reference of that file. Um, I set up my GPS, and usually they're set up in that way to use the WGS84 uh, datum using the lat long, and it's it's the same code as before. It's the same reference, uh, spatial reference as before, as we set as we set up for the project. And it will use by default uh, a simple um, flat carré projection. And I press OK. Now, hopefully, if it worked well, these points should appear on your map as a new layer. They should appear as a new layer here. And if, it's, if you if you select it and zoom to it and zoom to the selection, you should end up somewhere in Stuttgart. If you if you end up somewhere else, then, then there's a, there is a problem in the, in the process. Yeah, Sorry, if you zoom to, zoom to the player. <laughs> and you actually... Yeah, I the <laughs> <laughs> I am indeed, I am indeed in Stuttgart, so that's reassuring, <laughs> and I can visualize so the the 46 GPS points as another layer on my map. We use the same projection. Uh, we made sure that we use the same projection. Uh, that's how. That's why we can see them on the, on the same view. And I can visualize the uh, corresponding attribute table. Okay, so that I just open here the attribute table corresponding to the GPS points here by clicking there on the open attribute table option. Okay, and you can there's already in the attributes table an important information which will allow me to distinguish between cases and controls. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that the actual coordinates and the unique ID is also has also been imported. Now, it's not over. You have to 
should say this as a shape file, as we did for in the, the last uh, last section. Before uh, we, we close the project, before we go to lunch, I invite you to save this layer as a shape file. So far, it's not a shape file. So we do the same thing. We click, we select the layer, and we go to save as. I will give it a name, I will give it case, I will name it case control. It will, it will be uh, the special, special reference of that uh, shape file will be the special reference of the project, which we have already defined. I can, and I can save it. And it should now be available as a shape file in my working area. <coughs> Case control shape file here, which I can now open. Okay? And in the, um, we won't have, we won't do it now, but we will have plenty of time to do it with Arnaud this after lunch. There are, of course, there are ways to to show those, uh, to change the color or the symbol of the points according to the attributes. Uh, you might, of course, want to distinguish on the map between cases and controls. We'll we'll see how to do that uh, after lunch. The same, the same, uh, the same options that we use for the boundaries, so the I mean boundaries can be used for the with the points data. Namely, you can you can click on that useful tool to identify a feature, and you can select any point, click on it, and the the corresponding attributes will be, will, be, will, be, uh, will appear on the screen as a little table. So you can see here this point. I know it's it's a control, for instance. Uh, similarly, you can use the table here if you want. Let's say to select all the cases. So I want cases to be selected. <laughs> so I now have uh, selected using the attribute query. I have selected the points that are my cases, or at least that represent the, the, the house, the home, the home of the cases. Are there any questions on that part? So you see, it's quite easy to to import. Um, your own GPS points, or whether from directly from a GPS device with the, with the plugin GPS, or from simple text or CSV files. You just have to define clearly the X and Y columns corresponding to the lat long uh, information. And in, this is an example. It's a simple example of of a, of a project. It's a simple example of a project with two layers. I have my case controls, and I have the, the borders of the German districts. One is a point data. One is vector data. Uh, sorry, yeah, one is polygon and one is point, and they're both vector data. Save this okay. as case control. Using the same projection. Oh, I save the project I've already I, I gave a name to the project. Project I will now save it. It's a good point. And also an important thing is that remember to save all your newly created files in the in the right working directory. Otherwise, you'll get lost very easily. But that's that's the common. Practice, good practice in all, in all uh, data analysis. Um, okay, shall we break for lunch? If you want to save all these things, okay, so we and we need to get there, then you, you save us or you save yeah. the project. Well, this is my project, so I saved it as a project. Right. So it's already, okay. it's already saved as two gouges. 
So the name of the project is here at the top of the, of the view. And now if I close the software, I can reopen it and it will automatically load the same the same file. So file open project Stuttgart GIS for instance and you see my two layers are automatically loaded. Genau. Okay, before we, before we go for lunch, so we, we don't, uh, we don't, um, we won't finish at six o'clock in the evening, I'll briefly give you an overview of the next section, uh, which we won't do, we won't do together this afternoon, because we'll have more interesting stuff to do, but it's to, the logic of the next section, which you can do at home easily, um, is to import an image in that project, okay? So, um, what I did, <coughs> so the first section was how to import vector data from the Eurostat, data, Eurostat, Eurostat website. The second one was how to import GPS points. And this, this last, last section is to import a satellite uh, raster image from, in this case, Google Earth. So Google Earth provides images of all around the world at different uh, resolution. For Stuttgart, actually, for most European cities, it's quite high resolution. And for each for each point on the Google Earth software image, you see there's a lat long there's a lat long coordinate. So it's it's georeferenced. So in a way, Google Earth is a kind of G, is, a, is a kind of GIS where you view layers that are georeferenced. Now, in my in my in our fictional outbreak of uh, in Stuttgart, uh, you could consider this as a regional outbreak. For instance, there's one suspected source, which is this this particular feature here, which is a church. It could be a cooling tower or anything. So to get uh, one way to get the coordinates of of this source, but it could be any other feature on the map. I want to export that picture to my previous uh, environment. Okay. Uh, how it works is I will simply I will simply save this image in my working directory. By, by zooming to the extent I want, so for instance to this extent, and I will go to File, Save, Save Image. Okay, so that's the first step. I, I save my image. Oh, I want to save my image as a JPEG, for instance, in my working directory. Mm -hmm. But before that, and to be able later on to georeference ge that image, I will have to take what we call ground control points. Okay. So I will I will need to pick up uh, a certain amount of points on that picture, for which I will uh, write down the exact uh, lat long coordinates. Because if I just export this picture as a JPEG within my QGIS environment, it will not be georeferenced automatically. It will just be an image without any uh, coordinates. So what I will do, I will, have, I will have to, before exporting it, exporting it into a JPEG, make sure that I have uh, ground control points for which I know precisely the coordinates. Quickly, in, in Google Earth, an easy way to do that, and it's explained in the, in the tutorial, is to, is to use this, this little tool here, where you can mark, it's a place mark, you can, you can leave it anywhere on the map. 
and it will give you the precise latitude and longitude coordinates. Okay? So I've done that actually before exporting before saving that view from Google Earth. As you can see, I have put it seven ground control points for which I have noted down the XY coordinates. For instance, on a piece of paper or on an Excel spreadsheet. What I did afterwards, I opened my QGIS uh, software and I used a plugin called GeoReferencer. Okay? which will allow me to transform the JPEG that does not contain any uh, XY coordinates into an image, raster image, that contains, that uh, has precise uh, geographic, ge geographic coordinates. In other words, I will use my, my pins to georeference the image that I've imported. So we're dealing now with a raster, raster data. So I import the image, the raw image, with no, with no uh, geographical, attach, geographical information attached to it. I will mention first that I will work in that particular spatial reference, which is the one I've been using since this morning. It's the WGS84 Datum with uh, Latlong and Platkate production. And with this little window, I will be allowed to define for each of my seven points the exact x, y uh, position on using that special reference. So I, I won't do it for all points, but if you have more time at home, you can do it by yourself. You will be able to select add the points. And you can, for instance, zoom in to this first pin, and you start georeferencing. So you will apply, you will indicate that this particular point corresponds to a, a, a longitude and a latitude of x and y. Okay? It's an alternative to a GPS. If you don't have a GPS, then you, you go. You know where your case yeah. are, and then you go to the, this map and you find yeah. it. But it's a bit different in the sense that here you will import the whole image. So you won't have points, mm -hmm. you will have the whole image. Okay? Uh, which, might be, which might be of interest if you want to have information not just on particular points, but on, on buildings or uh, larger areas of polygons and so on. Point sources. Point sources. So once, once I've done that georeferencing exercise, I, the QGIS transforms my original JPEG image into a new image which is georeferenced. And in your data set, in your working directory, it's called Stuttgart Google Modified. Modified, meaning here that it has been georeferenced thanks to the seven control points. So this has to be now a TIFF or? First you have a J JPEG file and then you georeference -refer and now it's a TIFF? Uh, yeah, QGIS by default uh, transforms it into, into a TIFF. Oh, that's... Okay, that uh, the program is doing it, so I, I don't have to... Is it a vector or a raster? It's a raster. 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 It becomes a raster, actually. No. And again, if it worked well, I have my, my seven control points. If it worked well, my, my image is now georeferenced. And when I add it to my project, it should appear as a new layer. Uh, I defined very well the spatial reference. I'm using the same, the same spatial reference here. The one I've been, we've been using since this morning. So this, uh, the code corresponding to 4326. And if I zoom in, if I zoom into the layer, I should be able to, yeah, to very verify that it's it's indeed uh, correctly placed. Note that it has been projected 
uh, georeference using only seven control points. So the image is, is actually a bit transformed. Yeah. It's not perfectly, it probably does not perfectly fit the real uh, coordinates of, uh, of, of, uh, of Google Earth. But it's probably good enough for our level of, of uh, precision. Could you switch so that the points are given above in this picture? Yeah, so uh, here I can, uh, if I want to see all the points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see the image is now uh, in second position. And actually, why, why I did that, I mean, it's just to show you that you can import and georeference a, a Google Earth image. But in this case, what I wanted to, to do is to have afterwards a precise idea of where is locate, where is my uh, uh, suspected source, where, where is located. And we can add more images if you want? Okay, you, can add, you can add as many images as you want. There is a, a very interesting plugin as well, mm -hmm. it's the Open Layers plugin, where you can add the same you know, a, a Google Earth picture yeah. behind. So it's a really, really yeah, there's a new plugin called uh, Open Street. Well, it's Open Layer. Open Layer, which I did download. Is it there? No. There's yeah. There's a new plugin which will automatically upload Google Map, Google Earth data uh, to to the to the project. But you have to be online to you have to be online. That's one thing. Second thing, it's it will automatically reproject. Everything in, Google. in uh, the Mercator, in the Google Mercator projection. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful when you use that plugin. Um, What's the name of the plugin? It's Open Layers. So Grata is asking, how do I get the plugins? Um, you go to plugin, and you go to fetch plugin, uh, Python plugins, but you have to be online to do that. Mm -hmm. And it will it will browse in some repositories where you have a list of plugins you want to install. It's very well explained on QGIS website actually how to get external plugins. Note that these these plugins here are what we call the core plugins that so they have been automatically installed. Now just before we go to lunch, why why did I do that? Why did I want to import that layer? Just not not just for aesthetical reasons, although it looks good. I want to to create a new layer which will be my source. Okay, so I want to create a new shape file, and that's another way to get data, spatial data. I want to, based on the satellite image, I want to create a layer corresponding to my suspected source. And again, that's shown in your case study tutorial. You will have to add Uh, yeah, new vector, vector layer. It's, where is it? It's new, uh, oh, on the top, new. Uh, layer, new. Layer, new, new shape file layer, or you can go directly there in the icons. There's a menu called, there's a, a button called new shape file layer. So I will create a new vector layer. I can press on that. He's asking me, is it a point you want to create? Is it a line, a polygon? Let's say I want to create a polygon, which would be the exact shape of the cooling tower. He's asking me the uh, reference system, which will be, will be using the same as the one that we've already defined. I can name it source. He's asking me whether I want to add attributes to it. At this moment, I don't want. And I will name it in my working directory. Am I in the right one? Yes. <coughs> Source. 
polygon. And I can start, you see, has the layer has already uh, appeared on the layer, but it's empty. Right? It's empty. Nothing has been defined yet. It's empty. What I will have to do now is to what we call digitize, digitize the feature. So I will edit that layer, pressing on the uh, toggle editing button. And I will be able to start drawing the uh, features of interest. In this case, I want to capture a polygon because the church or the cooling tower is building, so it's on a point. And I can now, after clicking on that button, I can now just draw the polygon corresponding to my cooling tower in Stuttgart. So that's another way to create a, a shape file. I, I right click when I'm finished. QGIS asked me to, to, to give a value for the first feature. And so an attribute value to the variable ID. I will name it one. And I have created a shape, a shape file, a polygon vector. Which is um, which is which is the, the 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 source, and I can stop editing, saving, and it's now it's now shape file. It's now another layer. Okay. So. Uh, we know how now you know where, where we're getting at. We have the points, the cases, the controls. You now have the exact location of a point source. And some of the QGIS uh, capabilities will allow us to, for instance, to, to, to create a buffer to create a buffer around that particular source. To define uh, the exposure status of our cases and the controls. A bit like the Norwegian colleagues did for the Legionella outbreak. The accent of the shape file? Uh, yes, so this is a shape file. So it includes the coordinates yeah, of the polygons. That's why it's mapped. And that's why it's georeferenced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is georeferenced now. That's why you see it on the same on the same project. You can do also in QGIS. You can automatically create a point that will be the center of the polygon, the center, as, as they call it. So just to summarize what I did, I imported a Google Earth image into QGIS by taking seven round control points and by using the georeferencing plugin of the software. Remember there was the layer of the, the polygons for the boundaries coming from Eurostat. There were the uh, GPS points coming from the CSV file, which was from, imported from the GPS, so to speak, <laughs> after we went to the field. Um, we also have now a la layer that is the source polygon, the source, whatever you call it, which was created by importing an image, which we would georeferenced. It's, it's a, bit, a bit complex process, but it can be done. And it was used, the satellite image, was used to, to create, to simply create a new shape file, a vector layer, uh, representing the suspected source. Sus suspected source. So now, as, uh, this is more coming back to the, to the EPI, if you want to think in terms of, uh, for instance, of an anal analytical study, you now have, you now have information on uh, cases, controls, and a suspected source. 
Um, and the, of course, the way the way you select your control in that your controls in that example is quite important. You want them to be a random selection of the inhabitants of the gap. For instance, something you will not want to do is to match your controls by by the residence, by the by the, the, the location, because in that if you do that, you will not be able to study the importance of space uh, in a race factor analysis. And we will we will use the points data tomorrow to do. Uh, specifically more analytical uh, analysis, namely to try to, to see whether cases uh, tend to cluster with respect to the controls, so if you have uh, clustering. And we will also see whether uh, there is a cluster around one particular source, namely the cooling, the cooling tower or the church in that particular example. Which can be done also, uh, and that's, that requires less uh, statistical tests, uh, is to create a buffer around the source uh, to, as, to, uh, as to, um, uh, to put to label as, as exposure status to, to our cases and our controls. Okay? Uh, Arnaud will come back on the concept of creating a buffer around the point. By buffer, I mean a radius, absolutely. So one question that I might want to ask myself is, uh, what's the proportion of my cases and my controls that uh, live within, uh, let's say, 500 meters of the point source? You might want to do some literature review and see how you know, the previous studies have shown that the risk of uh, inhaling, inhaling Legionella can, be, can go as far as 500, one kilometer. And you can test the hypothesis that living closer to the source is a risk factor in getting the disease. Um, and this will be covered in Arnaud's case study tutorial. It's also covered in the handout, this morning's handout. The last section tells you how to do a buffer, but we'll do it together with Arnaud. <coughs> Okay, so don't forget, don't forget uh, the epi uh, logic behind what we're do, what we are doing, and in terms of uh, uh, study design, exposure, and what we're trying to to to, uh, to assess and to show. Okay, so so far so good for the the introduction to the spatial data and how to import them into QGIS. QGIS. Now we will uh, we'll do a bit more of of, uh, um, of exercises with another data set, and I, I leave Arnaud in this second tutorial.